nine one one. What's your emergency? Man, she got hung up on. Why? Why? Why is Hardaway not here? Man, maybe I need to call nine one one. I mean, he was kidnapped by the Riddler that one time. He's had freaking, uh, the freaking claw chasing him. It's, it's too many issues, man. I'm telling you, but this is the questionnaire, and I am the unknown factor, aka that Wade Wilson of hip hop, right? Right. And, you know, I finally got a chance to bump some of my own music. Y'all should check that out. But that is not this particular quest. Ladies and gentlemen, this particular quest, well, it's a little deadly. It's about some rejection. You know, there might be some magic involved. And James Emmett is in the house. Hello. <laughs> yeah. having me on. Man, Thank it's a you. It's a pleasure. Man, it's a pleasure, especially knowing how much you've worked with Erica, right? Um, and Erica, oh, er Erica is a pleasure. Shout out to Erica for yep. for so many reasons for coming on on that past pay and con with her, Doug, uh, Stephen, and Tom. If you haven't checked that out, check that out, y'all. We got into why comic books or have comic books become too dark over time. It was very intriguing. We'll get to that mm -hmm. with you in a moment, man. But firstly. So I got this off Kickstarter a while ago, right? I finally got I finally got to sit and read it. I need to I need to do a graphic review over on uh, this month in comics about it. But I'm gonna. So you edited this. I edited that, yeah. Because your name says you edited it, man. So I can tell, <laughs> right? That's my baby. Right, That's Erica, my baby. Yeah. Right. So I'm not gonna give no spoilers because I really sincerely hope. After reading that, I want to see it turned into either a show or a movie. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, I really do. I think it, I think it would work really well as a film. I mean, I think it would it would work absolutely phenomenal as a film. Bro, there is only one moment I can think of ever reading comics where it kind of watered my eyes up, and that's when. Uh, Peter Parker died in the Ultimate Universe, and his aunt's sitting there like, and he's like, you know, and because it, it was a screwed up moment. It, yeah, why are you gonna edit in another moment where I almost died? like, the dude, really? That was sad. <laughs> that was like, that's, that's the goal is to make people feel things. That's that's everything. So thank you. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that was legitimately sad. It was it was very very, and that's why Eric had told me to read uh, Strange Tales next. Right, which you can check out the first Factors graphic review we ever did on This Month in Comics, the March edition, right? With myself and Dave from Comic Book University. We talk about that at the very end of the episode. I kind of get into a little bit. <laughs> oh, no, shit. It was The Spurs of Oz that I did. It wasn't Strange Tales. Whatever. Still a fantastic book. Uh, <laughs> my bad. I've, I've read a chunk of Erica's work recently. What can I say? Um, but... <laughs> I uh, probably we'll, we'll get to strange tales at a different point as far as on factors graphic review, but that's we only do this month in comics once. I'm gonna have to tell Dave we're gonna have to start doing it weekly so I can do more graphic reviews. I guess and he's gonna be like, Dude. yeah, and he's gonna be like, you're an asshole, man. <laughs> All right? All right. So I do the. I'll tell you what though, James. Let's just get into it, man. Uh, what was it like to take that whole process through Kickstarter with the Deadliest Banquet, uh, and then it ends up getting dropped like by image like it does yeah that was um wild i um well i had done i had four i had done four kickstarters <laughs> before um for a book called i am hexed um which was um and now been picked up by rocket ship entertainment which is really cool um but this was this was a dream because i love working with erica anyway and we were always trying to connect and figure out how to work on something together um, and then, um, the deadliest, she sent me a bunch of great ideas for the deadliest bouquet and we had talked about it and went back and forth. And, um, and then we just were, we were talking about trying to figure, we were pitching it around and it was almost picked up by another company. And then they kind of dropped it because the pandemic happened and we we're like, fine, we'll just freaking kickstart it, you know, let's we'll figure it out ourselves. And then. It became really successful and got like a lot of great eyeballs on it. And then after the campaign was over, we were like, uh, what should we, you know, what do we want to do with it or, you know, try to have it proceed? Um, and I was like, why not 
you know, we were like, let's toss it at every publisher we can. And I was like, throw it at Image, throw it at blah, blah, blah. We'll all, you know, try everybody. Um, and then Image came back. And the process was pretty fast once they were interested. Um, and it was pretty rad. Um, it was very exciting. Uh, I had never had anything published by Image, which is, I mean, it's pretty it's incredible. Um, and then we, the wildest thing to me was like the last issue had a variant cover that had Spawn on it, which is just so wild for little 90s baby me, like being like, what the fuck? Like I couldn't even, I couldn't wrap my mind around it. It was so incredible. I was, yeah. So, and to th see these th three sisters just chilling out with Spawn. It was just very, very cool. I didn't catch them. And now you kind of want to make me just go get that one variant cover. I'll it's be real honest. Cool. Yeah, you should definitely. I, I like, I was like, make sure I have some of those. Erica. Well, make sure I, yeah. Ready. I mean, because <laughs> I didn't, I didn't pick up the issues because, you know, I already got the Kickstarter edition, yeah. and I kind of like personally to me, that's 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 cooler that I that I have this. It, the, yeah, that's just, the original babe. Right yeah, there. yeah, yeah. It's yeah. just it's just a it's just a, a hair I, cooler. I have one near me, but it has the price tag on it because we're at a convention. <laughs> so, <I'm, laughs> but just some easy peel off stickers so it don't leave no mark. Yeah. So you know, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah, and you, I mean, you gotta hustle them, man. I, I mean, I get that. I respect that, right? And 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 for real, to be picked up by Image, shout out to Image. I, I've loved Image Comics forever, and we've had a number of creators that worked with Image. From I mean, Tony, uh, who's currently dropping Local Man with uh, Tim Seeley, Doug Wagner, like I said, who joined Erica on the recent PanCon, who's dropping Flush, which is which is another level of insanity. I don't know if you've read that. I don't know if you've read no, that, man, but. Yeah. yeah, it's it's a it's a different deadly uh, over there different, on porn. Yeah, a little different than deadly. Yeah. Okay. A little a, a different version of insanity. Yeah. A, little, a little hairy, but but man, I just since since we're starting out with the deadliest bouquet, which was a book that initially was you shopped around, you you got rejection, and then it ended up getting Kickstarter, and then you ended up with what is the third biggest comic book publisher out there i mean it is yeah it's, it all really worked out really well yeah. actually <laughs> I, I i love the current kickstarter you have right we suck at comics oh yeah that was um that's uh wayward raven right that's yeah yeah um how how did that come about yeah because it was it's your pinned at your top of your twitter man that's what i was like oh. What is it? it? Yeah. Um, well, right now it's Christabel because that's the one that I'm uh, that I edited for Erica. But um, oh, we'll, 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 we'll get to Christabel. But no, dude, I'm telling you, pinned at the top of your Twitter, I assure you, is that because I just checked it moments ago. <laughs> just so <laughs> you're aware. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, yeah, no, we suck at comics is done by a, a group of people that I had worked that I had done work with and for and. Uh, called Wayward Raven. Um, they're a great group of guys, and it's like basically, <clears throat> I'm not actually in it, but they're just I'm supporting them. They're really rad, um, and it's just uh, it's a collection of sort of pitches and ideas that hadn't gotten picked up, and they were putting together an anthology of uh, comics that um, didn't necessarily get picked up by publisher or ideas that didn't get picked up, and they're promoting and showcasing different talents and stuff. Wait, really cool. so you didn't edit that? You're just yeah, I have no involvement with it directly, except that they're friends of mine. So I was just like, hey, check this out. Um, I like to support other, you know, other people in the comic book industry. I think it's important, and especially for indie books and writers and artists, um, you know, the editors, you know, the up and down the spectrum. I think it's really important to support the community because they come back and they'll support you, hopefully, in the future. And that's sort of how the game is played a lot of the time <laughs> we all spend money on each other and then we spend more money on each other and then that kind of goes back and around we so just, it's like you know, the opposite money. so it's like the opposite of hip-hop i got you i got you yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, you know, uh, publishing is it's a small community um especially comics and everybody knows everybody else so you just want to try and play nice as much as possible especially and like cultivate relationships and really get to know other people and that's like really important in terms of you know, building a network and producing cool comics and work with other people that you want to do work with. Um, so yeah, big part of it. So it's a, as an editor, man, what's your, cause I, 
I, I think uh, from someone that collected comics for, I mean, dude, I've read, I, I can, as a hip hop artist, I say Stan Lee is my greatest influence. And I say that because he, uh, I mean, not necessarily he, I could sit here and list a thousand different writers, but it's way easier to just because I started off on Marvel. So I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and go Chris Claremont, Doug Wagner, Eric Short, Tom, like, you know, Tom McFarland. I, I don't have time to list every name. It's just easier to be like, no, Stan Lee's my greatest influence because he's technically the guy that created the universe that really got it to where, you know, that's why he's in the background right here. Um, <laughs> but, so I, like, I think that throws people off. But people typically, like, when they come from that, just the collector standpoint, I've come to the conclusion, they really only take note of the writer and the artist. Yeah. Which... Um, we've had inkers on here. We've had, I've had, we've had letters. We've had colorists. We've had editors, obviously yourself and Tom, uh, included in that. I mean, cause I'm, I'm trying like, especially the more I delve into this at an older age, obviously, you know, I'm not 15 anymore. Um, you come to the realization that, that it takes everything. It's cause it's, I think it was, uh, I was talking to Vlad. Um, and it was like, it, like, imagine the green lantern with no color. You know, I mean, it, it's a full collaboration. It's like a real collaborative experience of bringing a book together, which is pretty amazing. And it's also kind of a small knit group of people doing it. It's sort of amazing. Like, I think I was listening to your interview with Declan and he's saying like, it's like six people, nine people tops kind of involved in putting this little baby together and putting it out in the world and hoping that somebody connects to the pro someone will read the issue and cry or like, you know, connect with the characters or have a great time. Hey man, you're going to ruin my right. reputation. Stop bringing that shit up. Well, that's the goal. I'm like, I, I cry at everything. So I'm like, I'm the worst. I don't know what will actually hit people. Cause I'll just cry at anything. Like you play the right song and I'm down. The, um, so that's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, the ending. And I will say the ending of the deadliest bouquet, it really, it, it had a twist that I definitely wasn't expecting at all. You know, like I wasn't, that's the, out of like reading that whole book and then getting to the point, it's like, wait, what that, what, what? And then, and then that happens as an effect of that being the result of what, yeah, it, it was, it was really well put. Like, I honestly want to, cause I know, uh, speaking to Erica previously, she said that there were actually three story arcs planned. Yeah. I'm really hoping, uh, that this book has done really well with Image and everything, and I'm, I'm, man, I want to see more of it. At the same time, I know Eric is busy because she's got her work with Marvel as well, though, doing Hollow's Eve and um, X twenty three Deadly Regenesis. Um, so, uh, but I, but I really hope she takes the time to do that and and two more arcs. I'd love to see it as well as I want her bidet and sewer chickens Armageddon story. I know it's coming, <laughs> yeah. right? I know it's coming. I love working with Erica, so if she says jump, I'm like, how high? Where do we go? What are we doing? Um, so wait, I'm, wait. I'm always around. You would do the Sewer Chicken Armageddon comic with her? <laughs> I don't know. Um, I'll do anything with Erica. If Erica's coming to me with an idea that that I'm vibing on, then I'm there. And most of the time, it's whatever. I'm ready. So You tell Erica the unknown factor said he wants to do that comic <laughs> book. All right. <laughs> Okay. It was she, she's the one that randomly brought up sewer chickens on her on her initial quest with us. So I mean, random. He, you know, I was like, I was like, sewer chick. What? Ah. Yeah. That sounds like Erica. That okay. Sounds like a, okay. That sounds, sounds yeah. Yeah. It's, like I said, she's a pleasure. Make sure you all go out and check out uh, her initial uh, quest with us. Like I said, it's two parts. It was yeah. It was a it was a blast having her on, man. But. Uh, man, I I have more questions about this whole this whole thing, but you ain't even your work, man. It's, it's I don't even feel like we should get into it now. Get some of them creators to tell, tell some of them dudes to come on the show, and we'll we'll talk that out because that's that whole concept was hilarious to me. But like you were just supporting them, which is awesome. Jason, want to let you know, but like I, I ain't trying to dig into your brain about something that wasn't your work. You know what I mean? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah. No. I I'm just I I don't. Now I got. I don't think. 
I'm not involved in any way, but except that they're friends of mine and they're really great guys. So that's all I got. Now yeah, I got sorry. paper all over my damn floor, man. <laughs> also my fault. Yeah, I know. All right. So, so three wishes, man. I want to let you know, James, you're the first one to get this question. It's a questionnaire. The pre-show questionnaire has been modified over many times. You really think you'd be that generous if somebody sincerely gave you a billion dollars? You don't think it would twist you a little? No, I don't think anybody really needs a billion dollars. I think it's sort of ridiculous that we have billionaires in the world at all. I think it's stupid. Um, yeah, <laughs> I think like I am like perfectly fine with giving the money away. Like not all of it, obviously. Okay. I'd still be like, well, I could be co somewhat comfortable, but I don't need a billion dollars. That's absurd. It's insane. So I make sure my mom is comfortable, my sister, her daughters, my dad. You know, just make sure everybody's. And my friends, like, no student loans left. You know, take care of it. Done. I love the words that just came out of your mouth, man. As far as, no, I'm saying, as far as, like, there's no need for billionaires to exist. Because this is a conversation I was having uh, with somebody else recently. Um, I mean, this was off air, just a friend of mine. But uh, I, I, I'm a firm believer that in your lifetime... You can't do a billion dollars worth of work. Yeah. No, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, you just... You can't. And, and who would want to? I don't... Like, that's the... Th like, the amount of work you would have to do for, like, a normal person to earn a billion dollars, you'd have to live multiple lifetimes and just keep working. And capitalism is a mess, and so they would be happy to continue to see you work forever. You would, you um, would need one of these two powers right here. Yeah. Wolverine, Deadpool, yeah. You'd have to have a healing factor. Either that or be a damn Highlander to where, you know, it extended your life to that point. And, uh, I mean, even in the film Highlander, he wasn't much of that that much of a prick. And he totally could have been a billionaire. Totally. Yeah. Wolverine could be a billionaire. I mean, well, you know, maybe not. <laughs> maybe uh, not Wolverine. <laughs> well, I mean, he could if he wasn't so, I want to stab somebody in the face. Yeah. <laughs> have any morals at all like there's a weird dichotomy with wolverine there's always like uh oh but i don't want to go too far i can't possibly but i'll also stab people to death a lot and you're like well where's the line for you logan where is it <laughs> so, <laughs> he makes uh, it up as he goes along i swear he really does I, I, yeah I, I gotta give you a little crap about your other two wishes though man um, oh, why? Okay. Because you realize if you had a billion dollars and you couldn't manage for all your friends and family to be gainfully employed and for everyone not to have health problems, you're not using the billion dollars the way you should have. Cause, I know. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, well, health, you know, health, health problems affect everybody no matter. I mean, what, I will give you. But, financial but dude, if you have a billion dollars, there's a reason Magic Johnson don't have nothing no more. You know what I mean? Well, um, I mean, yeah, he's way more fortunate than a lot of, you know, gay men who died and no one cared about um but <laughs> um, yeah he's wait yeah that. yeah he could me. yeah he could play ball like he was one of the top three or four players when he was around so yeah he's that's i uh, i mean i wouldn't necessarily call that fortunate it was talent to a certain degree but at the yeah. same time i mean it's there's a reason there's a south park episode where they're like oh what's the cure you just inject money <laughs> I mean, money definitely helps. It never hurts. I mean, I don't think anyone's ever been like, please, no, no more money. Thank you. I have enough. Um, obviously, that's sort of a situation that we're seeing all the time is that no one knows where to, like, draw the line in terms of, like, how much is too much or why do you need, you know, $50 billion? Like, what is that doing for you? Um, so, you know, other than, like, financially setting up your family for multiple generations to come that no one even knows about. Um but, you know, the planet will be gone by then anyway. So what are we doing? You really, like, wait, 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 wait. Why do you say that? That was that was a bit pessimistic right there for someone that seemed so optimistic throughout their whole questionnaire. Why all of a sudden do you think the planet won't exist in a couple generations? <laughs> I mean, climate change, like, probably some nuclear war, you know, something fun like that. Something really up optimistic and uplifting. So, I don't know. Rising sea level. All right. So, um, so did Christabel, right? <laughs> <laughs> you asked. You asked that question. 
I mean, you're right, dude. There's a reason there's an island of trash in, in the middle of the ocean. And, and every country's like, well, it's far enough from us. We don't want to do nothing with it. And yeah, so that's a, that's a whole nother thing. We're getting, we're getting all social and political over here on the questionnaire, man. I blame James. I just want to point that out. I have a hard time not doing that, so right. it's rain me in. Hey, man, cool. look, look, dude, I, I don't know if you listen to hip-hop at all, but go listen to Kill a Factor, Wickedness and Retribution. That's myself and my brother DKB, and if we, uh, if that album ever becomes too successful and we just vanish, I won't be surprised. <laughs> True. You know? Well, when you when you specifically go after religion and government and corporations all at once and and you know you're bound to make one of them mad enough to make you go you know that's 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 all but again on to christabel before one of us get iced off this interview like, I am you know all right how what I die. Uh, on my forehead yeah. <laughs> as long as it's not a predator triangle i'd be like oh man this is yeah. Like, they hired a predator to kill him. I mean, that's kind of cool, but... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they really want you gone. They're like, not messing yeah. around. I mean, yeah. I mean, it'd be a way to go if, like, if they hired a predator to kill you, I'd kind of be like, well... Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. This is going to suck, man. This thing's going to take my skull. <laughs> it definitely would not be the open casket, but... Again, on to Christabel, man, before I digress anymore, because, you know, it's a problem that I have. So you can obviously tell, James. I don't know if you can. But uh, what what brought all that about, man? Because I uh, Erica was gracious enough to uh, send me a digital copy as well as a physical copy around here somewhere. So for everybody out there, I want to say go support that Kickstarter. Because, man, hold on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move Stan real quick. All right. Let's see. I had to scoot past Bishop War College. Check out Sean Hill, man. He just came on. It was a phenomenal interview. But yeah, look. It's already all printed up. There it is. All nice. Pretty. All nice. Yeah. Got the passage, that cover. So pretty. Right, look at that. Yeah. 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 Right. So, so if you go and you support this Kickstarter, um, I can tell you for a fact, you'll get your comic. Yeah. yeah, it's it's pretty done. Um, I mean, Amagoya Aguirre, who's the artist, is still working on the interiors, but they're almost finished. So it's well, not for issue one. He's not. Uh, well, no, she is. Uh, I mean, well, it, it, this collection for the Kickstarter is bigger. It's um, it's a seventy-two page book, so oh. it's, a, it's a longer. That's sort of a uh, that's like an ash can. Like, uh, check it out. Um, sort of. Uh, initial issue that uh, Erica was selling and uh, putting out and then um, but what we're doing is like a full like GN basically a graphic novel of the it's, it's like a full thing that's so terrible cool. I've supported the Kickstarter I mean I'm like I've even like but I haven't went and actually taken the time to look at it because <laughs> that's okay well because running this quest is quite madness i'll be honest because you know the 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 it's just it's just you, you've seen how it looks you know what i mean james and you know i'm you know what i mean so it's there's a lot of fucking editing yeah <laughs> yeah so yeah i know it's a lot of work well, yeah man it's fun it's it's i i feel like your editing job is way easier than my editing job i won't lie <laughs> I don't know about that. Really? I mean, I'm, well, it's well, different. It's it's different. It's definitely, oh, dude, it's it's definitely, definitely different, man. Definitely different. So what's the, what's the most interesting thing you ran across in editing Christabel? As far as like, was there something about it that was excessively difficult? Was there a moment that made your like your just brain hurt in some way to where you had to try and twist something around? You know, something to that effect. Um. Not, I mean, not with Erica. Erica's very good at collaboration and talking through things. So she's really such an easy person to work with. Like, I don't, um, like, if we have a disagreement, we'll just get on the phone and talk for two hours, and then it'll turn into a, a therapy session, because that's just how we roll. Um, <laughs> um, and she's such a sweetheart. I really have had, I mean, just great working relationship with Erica. Um, so no, I don't. I'm trying to remember if they're even, 
I think there was like conversations at the start of like certain things that she wanted to accomplish and she wasn't sure how to get there. So those are sort of like bigger conversations um, that were probably more in depth and a little bit more ongoing, but nothing that was like making me want to tear my hair out or anything. Those are just like normal conversations with creators trying to figure out how to break their story and you're just there to assist them and talk them through and sort of figure out what will help. Um, so no, not off the top of my head. Luckily, fortunately. So, is there anything that comes to the top of your head from perhaps? And, and again, we ain't gotta we ain't gotta name no names, right? Because I, I and I mean I've, I've said this I don't know how many times on the questionnaire. Like, look, you ain't gotta name no names, but you got any interesting stories? <laughs> well, I mean, there's always interesting stories. Creators, you know, I mean, you're dealing with people who are very <laughs> invested in their own. Um, artistic expression and you um, try to come to it at, as a place of understanding and trying to um, help them get to where they want to go and try to also push them to where you want them to be and so it's a lot of you know trying to um, very kindly and nicely push them but like not um, annoy them <laughs> so it's a lot of like those sort of you're kind you know, you're playing the game as diplomatically as possible. Um, but especially when you're working for a pub, like when you're working independently as a freelancer, like you're sort of like, well, we'll pitch it around. We'll see who picks it up or we'll just do it ourselves. We'll do it on Kickstarter. We'll, fund, we'll crowdfund it, blah, blah, blah. When you're working for a publisher like Mad Cave, you're, you know, or Marvel or what have you, um, you're restricted sort of by um, what they're, willing to publish um so there's certain things that like they're not obviously going to be putting out into the world um you know like or, or will allow like for marvel especially for licensed stuff like what they'll allow their characters to do or become or change into um because they have branding and identities and things that go beyond just comics so like you know you have to sell those billion dollar movie properties and you know animation and all of that stuff so everything's become a bigger you know thing um than like smaller independent comic book publishers sort of have to deal with oh man i totally understand that like i said in our and uh when we were speaking to tom uh when he went on a quest with us as far as the difference between you know dealing with someone on the level of marvel because then it's you know you, you can't do that with wolverine or you know no, Cyclops wouldn't do that, or, you know, there's just certain things they wouldn't allow, as opposed to where, you know, if you're dealing with image, writing your own story, it's totally okay to have somebody in a plush shoot, suit where their cat head just opens up and bites onto a cop. Like, that's not a problem, yeah. you and, know? Anything can happen in comics. Like, yeah. I mean, that's the fun part, but also, like, then you're, then you have to deal with a company at certain at certain times where you're like oh you're not actually allowed to do that like you can't have cyclops bite someone's head off like that's not a thing that you can <laughs> i'm pretty sure he did well no i know the hulk did in Zo in the marvel zombies but yeah that's the only place you're gonna see a a marvel hero literally like, bite someone's head off yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah you're not you're not you're not really gonna see marvel heroes just just biting heads off man so you, you're talking about the film properties though what do you think of that man, as far I I do love films you can't stand. By the way, that's a uh, I've never <laughs> like 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 damn bro, you went for three DC ones like really just, bad. just just and and then and then and then well actually technically technically you listed five DC films that you obviously just don't think did the comics justice, right? Um. I would agree Batman vs. Superman is terrible. Sadly. Um, I, I think they could have they could have done that way better. Did you like the Snyder Cut? I didn't watch it. Can I can I say? Just being James. I mean, look, I get it. I get it. It's broke up to where you can watch it like in an hour at a time though, and like the parts start and you know what I mean. And I and I know it's a lot. I get it. I get it. But I just wanted to see if they could do those characters. Even though I'm not a big fan of DC, I'm a way bigger fan of Marvel and of Image and smaller independent things, you know what I mean, than I ever was of DC. DC, it was very character-specific, like give me Hitman or give me Lobo, you know, a couple yeah, of things. I, I loved Birds of Prey, and I loved Wonder Woman, and I loved Catwoman, and I 
I just like I don't think they've really. I mean, Michelle Pfeiffer, notwithstanding. Okay, um, really wait, 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 wait. For a minute, <laughs> for a minute, I thought you were talking about the Halle Berry film. No, 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 just Michelle Pfeiffer. And nothing against Halle Berry. Before anybody no, takes that sideways. Great. But I really don't think she should play any more superheroes. I, I, I no, dude. I think sometimes it's the fact of you, you. I don't care how good of an actor you are. If you're handed shit, you're gonna you're gonna make a shit sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because that's just what's gonna happen, right? Yeah. Um, but I do recommend the Snyder Cut, man. Real, it's, it was kind of unfair. Yeah. <laughs> sort of, yeah. I was like, oh, what are we doing? Uh, yeah. It's it's just yeah. So nothing against Halle Berry. She's a great actress, but she was she was handed something that I I don't think anybody could have made good unless they were handed complete creative control to change a lot of things. Um, but I do recommend the Snyder Cut, James. If you have four hours to spare, I know it's a lot, right? Uh, I mean, I think movies are too long now. Like they're too long. They're I'm like two and a half hours. I have to sit here for two and a half hours. What are we doing? What's happened? What's going on? What are you telling me? Um, I think they're too long, a lot of the time. So I don't know what I'm doing for four hours. That's insane. I was like, Lord of the Rings was three, and I was like, I have to pee for about an hour and a half of that. And I was like, what are what's happened? What are we doing? <laughs> That's why I say watch watch it at home, man, and just do it in like hour intervals. Well, yeah. Because because I I definitely dude I don't think I could sit down and watch a four hour film like shit I can't like yeah no I I don't I, I just no and it, we all lost our collective minds I don't know what we're doing I don't know why we're doing three hour two and a half hour long movies I don't get it I don't get it really even in the case of like what what did what did what did end game clock in at like two and a half I think what was it what movie uh, Avengers End Game. Yeah, I mean, no, they're great, but they are really long. They're really long movies. I don't. But, I love those movies. Don't get me wrong, but I was like, at like the two hour mark, I was like, I think we've, I think we're done. I think we can wrap this. <laughs> Loved it. And I was like, but at the middle, like when I was watching it in the theater, I was like, this is great. This can just keep going. And then I rewatched it recently and I was like, oh, this is long. But I really love it. I still love it. 181 minutes. Is the is the runtime for Endgame? But do you really think they could have accomplished it's everything? Movie. Huh? It's a long movie. I mean, it is. But in all fairness, you have to sit through. And if you're watching for the first time in the theater, you have to sit through the credits. You have to sit through all those goddamn credits. And I love, but, I love that they credit everybody, and everyone should be credited. Thank you. But also, like, that's, but that's but come on, man. You know. But you know, if you really got to pee in that moment after the first in credit scene, you can run to the bathroom real quick and then run back and catch to the second in credit scene. You know, so so if you really if you really got to pee, right? And it just you got it, you got to get so you, you can you can catch that brief moment. That's true. You know, or you start thinking the people who are like coming, the ushers who are coming in to clean up. You're like, is there another one? Is there another? You know, after credit, like that's what I started doing. I was like, I can't. What are we doing? What's happened? Um, so they let me know if I need to stay or not. So that's really helpful. I like them. Thank you. <laughs> you know what's funny? I... I'm like, I have places to be. I have to go. I have to, yeah, I have to go to bed. Oh, you just don't want to know who the who the second unit director and the and the and the uh, grip was and the key grip and you you don't want to pay them their respects, man? Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> respect at home. I'll watch it again. At home. Catching James in the corner here, ladies and gentlemen. That's what I'm doing. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Everyone deserves to be credited. Everyone. Everyone. Yeah, I definitely agree with that, man. But then, like, but then you list Wonder Woman '84, which I don't think, and and you know, no one listed that as the comic book movie that they think did the comic the least justice. And I don't know, man. I think it's. Probably in the top five worst comic films I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, it's bad. Yeah. It's really bad. It's 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 really bad, man. And then you and then you go on to to it did you just slaughter DC, bro? I I, I kind I, I want them to learn. <laughs> How will they learn if we don't tell them that what they did was bad? <laughs> How? How will they learn? No. I think James Gunn will, I mean, maybe he'll do a good job. I hope. 
We'll find out. Oh, uh, I hope they do, and I honestly hope they cast um, Jason Momoa as Lobo. I won't lie. Like to hell with Aquaman. To hell with Aquaman. I if for anybody out there that knows the character Lobo and knows what he looks like. Dress up like put makeup in Jason Momoa to where he is the color of Lobo's skin, and yeah. he's Lobo. He he's Lobo. Yeah. Like he literally has the same facial structure. He has the same hair. He's Lobo. It was a weird casting for Aquaman from the comic. I mean, just a weird. I mean, what? I liked it. I I think I don't know. I don't know if I liked any of it. <laughs> I'll be honest. I don't know if I liked any of it. I, I tried. I liked Gal Gadot in the first one. The first Wonder Woman I thought was yeah. fine. Yeah. Except for that last act, which was just like her fighting a giant thing again. And I was like, all right, I don't Sure. Um, I think that's where they, they like DC in my, and man, we're on it. Like, I swear I got some people that work for DC coming up. They're like, did you just thrash all the movies? And I'll be like, look, it wasn't the comics, right? Like I'm waiting yeah. for, yeah, I'm waiting for Flash Five Minute War to come out in the graphic novel because I'm very much looking forward to reading it. I just don't want to buy all those comics. I'm just going to buy it in the graphic novel form when it comes up because the Flash in a Five Minute War that sounds freaking hilarious to me to a certain degree, you know? Because that's like what five years no, the to the Flash? Are its own thing. I I <laughs> I don't have a judgment. I mean, I don't read a lot of DC comics. I love them. I lo I grew up reading them a lot, so. You know, Birds of Prey was my jam. I love Gail Simone is a rock star. Um, but, you know, I, it, yeah. And I don't think they've ever really nailed Batman for me in terms of, like, the, the detective angle and stuff like that. I don't think the new Batman movie was that great. I just, I don't think they've really figured it out yet. No, no, look, Jim, that's the one that throws me off on your questionnaire is, is the bad because I've had people say that that was a, a great film. Several different creators really, really liked it. I think it, I think it's nailed the detective aspect of him way better than any past Batman film did yes. by Which far. Um, yeah. and and I seen them to where they set up a Joker versus Riddler thing, and I want that because I read the comic where the Joker and the Riddler were kind of just playing at Batman to where they. Ended up being like, no, screw you, no, screw you. A joke is funnier. A riddler is funnier. A riddle is funnier. And 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 I want to see that in film because it's hilarious. But the other thing you pick, um, like I, I I don't know. I've I've read Watchmen. I've uh I've watched the movie. I've watched the TV series. Uh, I know Alan Moore doesn't approve of any of it, which that's <laughs> that's completely the opinion of the creator, and that's fine. It's his creation. I'm sorry that he didn't have more creative control over it based on how it was based. But I mean, again, for anyone that knows anything about comics, Alan Moore pretty much created the concept of a graphic novel with Watchmen. You know, that's when graphic novels really started to become popular was when Watchmen and then it was collected and it was put out again and again. I mean, I've seen this stated other places. Um, so I'm, I'm, I hope I'm not just farting into the wind. I'm really not trying to. But I can't tell you how many creators... I've come on this show and put that as the comic book movie that did the comic the least justice. I I swear I'm about to get put all these questionnaires there. We do have a website coming soon if my ass ever gets everything done that I need to, whatever. And hopefully y'all will be able to check out all these questionnaires. It's going to take me a while to get them all up because I'm, I don't even know how many I have now, like 50 or something. Um, but it, it, it really has been answered a lot in Watchmen. Why do you think that that, in particular, didn't do the comic justice? I'm curious. I'd love to ask this to Alan Moore. I never would. I know. Alan Moore would probably be the perfect person to ask this question to. He, um, would, probably I in the, I, he um, would probably in the fucking interview right there, dude. He'd be like, I'm done with this quest. Fuck you. I know. Walk <laughs> off. Um, but I think for me, it didn't hit point of the story which was that it's not a bunch of super like they are super hero super powered people sort of but it just kind of like made them superheroes like you don't know it just really leaned into just being like oh this is just a bunch of superheroes um which i think was sort of kind of against the thesis of the story which is that these were all just like kind of broken people trying to figure out how to be superheroes and they 
most of the time weren't doing a very good job at it. Um, and I think part of the the problem was that um, uh, Snyder doesn't understand that. <laughs> and like everything was became like slow motion and like high octane and bigger than life and da 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 da. And I was like, well, that's not really the point of this. Um, so that to me was the problem with it. It wasn't grounded in any sort of like sense of real world um, shit. And obviously not all of it is like Dr. Manhattan is ridiculous. Like it's a big blue naked dude walking around. Obviously. With the snag like, just swagging, man. Like, as like, like a, personally as a gay man, I love a giant blue man. Great. But, um, <laughs> but I was like, what? Are, what? Um, all I know, I all I know, James is, you just want to make me be like he was swinging the D. Yeah, he just was swinging, he was swinging around, the D. You know, looking good. He's swinging the D. Good stuff. Don't um, ask why I got a big box of D batteries just sitting here. <laughs> but, uh, it's for it's for my that, child's track that for for fucking Hot Wheels. Just to just to clarify though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not for a toy. Not for a different kind of toy. Good, good, good. Um. Not um, never been my forte. That, that was, and they also got rid of the parts that were probably like more real world and like more grounded. I mean, I understood why certain things were edited out. I don't know, man. Um, they had the fucking rape scene. Yeah, I am well, yeah. But everything, you know, whatever. Um, no, I mean, like some of like the more normal people, the like the the lesbians and the you know like the newsstand people and like the people who are like on the um sort of on the outside looking in that's like true movies. like the kid that was reading the uh oh god what's the comic within the watchman yeah it's the like the pirate yeah i can't i cannot remember i'm i'm, I'm annoyed i can't remember the name of it i st i wish i still had my copy of the watchman i'd just grab it and look but unfortunately i don't life happened but um yeah the, like the kid and then so it's still with my mom so that's helpful yeah yeah funny. And the but the kid and the and the newsstand guy that were like there was way more of them in the comics so that's true I, I yeah I man I don't know I haven't watched that film in a long time and the yeah. more I get questionnaires back and the more people answer that the more I'm like I think I need to go back and watch that again <laughs> or never again or never watch it ever again whatever one of those one of those options yeah I've not I've never wanted to go back. Um, I have never wanted to watch a Snyder movie ever again. That's been my reaction to Snyder. So I'm going to get dragged for that, but that's my own. Tales of the Black Freighter. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Tales of the Black Freighter, which, which is, I wish, I wish, and, and look, imagine if they really would have truly adapted Watchmen from the comic, right? That's wild. It, well, it would have been six hours. James. Yeah. It should have been a series. That's what I would have done. And I would have mm -hmm. cast somebody better than mm -hmm. Malin Ackerman. I, I, I will drag her. She's a bad actress. I said it. Wait. <laughs> I was like, that was a bad choice. <clears throat> I think that's her name. Malin Ackerman. That sounds right. <laughs> Silk Spectre. Wait, who'd you play? Silk Spectre. The, the girl. The oh, main. okay, okay. Yeah, man, I... Her daughter, the, mother, the woman who played her mom was better than she was, and that was disappointing. I was like, just make her the main character. Just make her self of the modern day. Um, but they didn't do that. So. Anyway. Uh, man. <laughs> man, we, we just... I, I, I swear you're gonna, you're gonna get me in... Like... We support all comic books over here at the questionnaire, just so y'all know. <laughs> <laughs> I support all comics. I support everybody. I don't no, support Carla. Comics. Carla. Carla. Fucking. Silk Spectre. Yeah. Carla. Gugliana? Gugino? Gugino. There's the daughter and there's the mom. No, that's that's fully the daughter. That's fully that's fully the daughter. Oh, is it? Yeah. I'm, throwing, I'm, I'm messing up her name. Uh, hey, dude, look, join the club. I'll tell you. Go, go look at all the past hey, interviews. No, Malin, I, Malin, no. Malin Ackerman is the woman who played her. That's her real name. 
That's the actress's name. Oh, so wait, that's the character's name of the character that's not suspended. Yeah, sorry. Valen a- Ackerman is the actress's name. That was right. in there somehow. In my yeah, because no tally is that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. All right, all right. Too many. Yeah. I'm bad with names for anybody that's kept up with this quest over here that we do. And y'all ain't aware of it. Y'all have not been paying attention to how much I dick up artists and and everyone's name. There's a reason for uh, Dex's whole interview. I only call him Deck. You know what I mean? I don't know. I don't know if you noticed that, but yeah, I only call Deck Deck. It's his Deck. But <laughs> make sure you check out his work, man. Drop an old dog, and I'm I'm getting. I'm very looking forward to that uh, Alien comic he's getting ready to drop, man. Oh my god. Um. So what else you got in the works, man? Besides Christabel. Cause I was I was really looking forward to getting into, we suck at comics. I know. I'm sorry. And then it sucks uh, that you tell me you aren't involved, man. I got paper on my floor. <laughs> Damn it. Well, I I'm the edit I'm doing editing for Mad Cave Comics, so we have a bunch of stuff coming out. Mad Cave Studios. I'm doing Don't Spit in the Wind. Um, You've been canceled is coming up. Um, I'm doing John Tiffany. Wait, 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 wait. Stop. Bunch of great stuff. Did you yeah. just say a comic that's called You've Been Cancelled? You've Been Cancelled, yeah. Oh, explain further, good sir. <laughs> so, uh, You've Been Cancelled is set in a like dystopian future, and it's um, not that far in the future, but it's uh, everybody votes on people that they want to have cancelled and how horrible they are. Um, and then they have a bunch of cancelers who go out and kill them. <laughs> And earn money based on whoever gets to take them out. So that's the world. It's pretty fucked up. It's pretty great. Um, Kurt Pyers is the writer. Kevin Castanero did the art. Um, and it's going to be really rad. It's going to be, it's coming out in June. So I think you can pre order it like right now. Um, but yeah. You should tell them to get a hold of me. I want to get into that concept at a greater depth because you're telling me they essentially did, like, that, that like it's. I feel like it's a really screwy twist on like like a Repo Man kind of film, except it's like, uh, except it's like, yeah, we just we just decide who's gonna be canceled. Like, what kind of screwy that. <laughs> And then they have different cancelers. So, like, the main canceler that we follow is named Roland Endo. And then there's all these other cancelers. And so everyone's always competing to take out who's ever been canceled. So they're all trying to take each other out and then try to take out that person. So it's pretty wild. It's pretty great. The art is freaking... So this is like John Wick, except it's not controlled by the hierarchy of people with money. (laughs) It's just controlled by the internet? (laughs) Yeah. John Wick, but insane, basically. It's pretty crazy. I don't know if that would be a good or a bad thing if we did it in real life. Pretty bad. Pretty bad. Are you this sure, man? Good, maybe uh, maybe some people would have to fun. face consequences they should. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, this is sort of a maybe don't let it go this far type of story. <laughs> don't, don't, don't practice what we're preaching. Um, it's, yeah, it's That, that's, 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 that just sounds phenomenal. I'm very, very curious about this now. Um, awesome. Yeah, really good. That, really good. that, that, and you were supposed to send me Don't Spit in the Wind. I did. I sent it to you too late, I guess, because I, I sent it to you, but I don't know if you got it in time. Sorry. It's in your email, so check it out. Well, here, Chance. we're going to pause for 10 minutes while I go read it. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, I'll totally check that out after the show. It won't be the first time that I've read something that after the show from somebody for whether it was whether it was their negligence yeah, or, or email later or, than I was or, supposed yeah. to, and I was working until basically eight thirty. So hey, I was like, "Hey, man, it's okay. Sometimes it's my negligence for the reason that I don't get the comic read. I won't. I won't say like like Tony. I was speed reading like hell before his interview." <laughs> like I'm sure you have a lot to read, so that's yeah. I'm sure it's... Uh, dude, I don't want to get into this. Like, I got to stack like at, at least like that, probably I something. I don't know, man. All right, so so you're saying that, man? Like your your favorite character was Storm, yeah, and your least favorite character is Wolverine, and those are both. <laughs> 
Well, I don't know. I mean, I, I like Wolverine. I think it was the, I don't really hate any characters because that's like a uh, waste of energy for me. <laughs> I'm like, I don't like you. I'm not going to engage. I'm just not going to read you that much. Um, but Wolverine was everywhere when I was growing up. Like he was just, it was like, you couldn't escape him. So you're uh, it's just an oversaturation of Wolverine more than a hate of Wolverine. It was just like, okay, I think we got it. I think we've got everything we've got from the sky. <laughs> There's not much else we can tell. I don't know what else we're telling about this person at this point. Um, but they always found a new story to tell with, this, with Wolverine. So. I, I mean, I, I totally get that, especially like uh, my favorite character for the longest time and really still to a certain degree is, is Deadpool. I mean, if, well, if you're talking about the big two, it's, it's yeah. Deadpool. It is, right? And it was funny to see that character go from he's kind of there and then he's like just kind of trying to create and but it it took a while until he had um we'll say Wolverine popularity, you know? Yeah. Like it was he's yeah. He's, yeah. And he's everywhere now. So Yeah, it, it's really weird for me to think that this dude that like I I remember reading you know, when they started his first ongoing series, and it was, it, it, I mean, it, it did well. It by no means, like, it was, and it was an excellent comic. They they sold the shit out of it, but it wasn't like, okay, let's put this dude in 10 other books like it is Wolverine, you know? And then it got to that point with him to where it's like, now he's funding the Avengers. And I'm like, hold on. He's doing what? Deadpool is funding the Avengers? Hold the yeah. Wait. Whole foam, right? I mean, Wolverine's been an Avenger too, obviously, but but I get your point in that, man. Um, why Storm? Um, I don't know. I just always loved her. I think she's such an interesting character. Like her, her origins are so interesting versus like where she, where we kind of meet her, and then what she kind of decides to do and like become while she's with the X Men. And she's really like the best leader they've ever had. She's really smart, um, but grounded and just kind of everybody has like a great relationship with her, which is really so fun to kind of watch. And she's, you know, can sometimes be a little holier than thou, but she, you know, has like a lovely heart and a lovely spirit. And and then my favorite was when she lost her powers, though. Like that was probably my favorite arc of just watching um, this person sort of lose touch with what she thought made her complete and but finding out like who she was and what her strengths were other than being that thing um, I thought it was just beautifully done like Chris Claremont I think I mean Chris Claremont's favorite character I think in a big way is Storm um, and she really became sort of the main character of X-Men for about 15 years while he wrote her or wrote them in Storm basically. Um, but, you know, I think she's just, and visually, I think she's just such an impactful character and she's such an important character um, in terms of historical significance of being a black woman, being so present, being so strong and smart. And um, just, I think she's, and her power set is so cool. I think just like everything, I think she's just a rad character and the Mohawk, please. Just ever, I mean, like, what are we doing? Like, she's so great. Um, it's just, it still hurts me, like, physically and emotionally that she's never just been done well on, like, in a live action. Isn't that way. almost every every member of, I mean, if we're going to be completely honest here, it's pretty much every X-Man and everybody in the X-Men universe have not been done well in films. I'll, I mean, Wolverine was. There's certain Wolverine films, like, like Logan's Phenomenal, in my opinion, you know, oh, Logan's, Logan is great. Yeah, yeah, the Deadpool films, they did Deadpool. They they yeah. they did Deadpool. I mean, they 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 fully like. Here's Wade Wilson. Like, I don't, I don't. Yeah, you know. So there. I mean, I, I could probably think of a couple other if I really sat here and thought about it. Um, but I mean, for the bulk of it, man, no. Like, like I, uh, like I was talking to Sean Hill recently, and we brought up the. Uh, how they play Bishop um, in Days of Future Past. And he's like, yeah, and he's like, he's like, I don't feel like Bishop would have gotten taken out like that. But I thought, I was like, yeah, no, no, he probably wouldn't have. With everything he'd have been through, he'd have been like, fuck this Sentinel, and like, done something, you know, that 
that no, made exactly. it. Exactly. I don't think anybody's felt like, ah, there's my, you know, my best friend's favorite character is Cyclops. And he was just like, what are we, what are we doing? What's happened? You know, like, <laughs> like he died off screen. I was like, I'm so sorry. Like it was so like, you know, so these are, we all grew up watching and reading these comics and being totally obsessed with these characters. And then you're just sort of like, all right, well, that was bad that wasn't good that was bad so yeah no one's no one's felt fully fulfilled i don't think except for wolverine I, fans yeah i got the and benefit and, and yeah maybe deadpool fans. i got the benefit of i'm a huge wade wilson fan yeah, yeah. and and <laughs> when they did and when they dropped that first deadpool film and i went and seen it i was like damn that was wade that was that was full-on wade wilson just doing his thing as his thing i mean if you wanted to be a real stickler you could be like oh Technically, his origin was a little bit different, I, and it was as far as they didn't have the whole, you know, it was Wolverine. It's, but, but at least it wasn't what they did in Wolverine Origins, where they sewed his mouth shut. And I was just like, because when I seen that, I was like, you just took the Merc with the mouth. For a while, it, was, it was touch and touch and go for for uh, Deadpool. It wasn't clear if we were ever going to see that happen. But well, then, I mean, good for. Ryan Reynolds, honestly, like good well, for him. You know that's only because Ryan really Reynolds. You know it's because he funded, uh, like a Deadpool short that was. I the, know. Yeah, yeah, like that. Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds made that happen. He very yeah. much. Yeah, he. I mean, to the point where he put his own money. Like he put his money, or, or yeah, he put his money where his mouth was, very much right on that Merc, and yeah. fully made a bet on it that. Paid off to the point where he bought a soccer team. <laughs> yeah. And he's making another Deadpool movie with Wolverine, the only other successful X-Men char mutant character. I'm, so, I'm curious, man. Because, I mean, we obviously know very little about that. Uh, there's there's a ton amount of speculation. Uh, but are, are you looking forward to hopefully actually seeing the X-Men done right now that, you know, they bought Fox? Oh. Now that Marvel has them back, yes. I'm, you know, I mean, watching like movies like Black Panther and like seeing what they can do with specifically women and black women, like because of just how poorly they wrote Storm and in particular, like that's always where my concentration is because I'm uh, obsessed with my Storm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, like you're just like, wow, that wasn't great. Um, so that, that gives me hope always. Um, just that, I mean, and I always wanted Angela Bassett to play Storm. That was always my dream. I thought that was just like, well, that's who should play Storm. That's Storm. Um, but, you know, the time passed um, and they had Halle Berry play her, um, which was a choice. Um, then, <laughs> 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 um, but no, I think it does fill me with hope that they'll because of what they've done before, that they'll really be able to land a team dynamic of weirdos, superheroes who are trying to be like some, you know, found family situation and all that good stuff that we really want from X-Men. Well, the soap opera is still there and they're all trying to like sleep with each other and they don't know what they're doing. And, you know. <laughs> and Channing Tatum. That we all really like. Yeah. yeah, and Channing Tatum still apparently really wants to play Gambit. I'm cool. That's, I don't want that. <laughs> you know, I and nothing, I, nothing. I like a clean slate. I think a clean slate is probably the way to go at this point. I know. Well, but they can't, see, but, I mean, you can't say they're even going to do that based on the fact they've already brought, Patrick Stewart was a perfect Professor X. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Well, that was also a different, like, multiverse sort of situation. I think they're going to recast everybody. And I love Patrick. Stewart. I, I don't think they're recasting Ryan Reynolds. Oh no 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 no! Not Ryan Reynolds. Um, I don't know what they're going to do with Hugh Jackman. They're probably going to get rid of him in some way. I don't I, know. And I, look uh, to uh, to bring up Erica again, man. We had this conversation. I, I man, I'm ninety percent sure we had this conversation with Erica. But what I'd love to see them do is if they bring in Hugh Jackman, then bring in X twenty three. You know, bring in Laura. And that'd be great. Because that actress played that role phenomenally. She's at an age now where she could come in and take it over and just yeah. be the Wolverine of the universe, in my opinion. Because I don't I don't think it's wise, in my opinion, for Marvel to 
put Wolverine in the films at least for the next five to ten years. Yeah, probably not. Well, especially if they're doing another one with Hugh Jackman. Right? Yeah. You're like, what are you doing? You're kind of setting yourself up that you can't possibly have a different Wolverine just pop up who's, like, doing Hugh Jackman light. Like, you know, it just doesn't... Hugh, I mean, Hugh is Wolverine at this point. Everybody, you know, everyone's watched him for the last 20 years where you're like, okay, well, you're Wolverine. Yeah, it's easier to replace someone like James Marsden for Cyclops or Halle Berry for Storm because everyone was sort of like, sure. Yeah. You I think the only <laughs> X-Men you would have a hard time replacing right now are, I think I think it'll be hard to replace Patrick Stewart. Yes. You know, I think it'll be difficult to, re- I mean, you, you can't replace Ryan Reynolds because he is Deadpool and it'll be very, yeah, and, and Hugh Jackman is the same. He is Wolverine. Short of that, I don't know of another character you couldn't recast in there. Like, I don't, I don't think there would be much of an issue. I will say. Of like James McAvoy stepping in as Professor X. Like they were okay. You know what I mean? Like it can happen. Um. I think people will be more accepting of that. I think people will be less accepting of like, oh, we're reintroducing Wolverine into Deadpool again, and now we're going to try to have another Wolverine, like, you know, who's kind of similar uh, to Hugh's interpretation of, like, I think that's hard. That's going to be hard. And what they could do is try to do, like, a real X-Men first-class situation, where it's just, like, you know, the actual X-Men, like, the originals. Um, but I think that's a lot of white people, again. So I think... To be frank, like I think, like we kind of we should learn something from watching the Avengers and be like, well, that's a lot of white people. Um, so I think it's good to be like, hey, you know, the good thing about what they did with the second generation of X Men was like, oh, there's somebody from Africa, there's someone from, you know, Germany, there's someone from Russia, there's someone from Ireland, there's you know, there's a lot of different people um, from different backgrounds, which was like very refreshing than just being like, and here are. White people from New York. <laughs> yeah, I'm from New York. So I get it. I'm like, cool. God. Um, but you know, yeah. I love how poignant like, you are about. Yeah, I love how poignant you are about that, James. It's it's, it's pretty comical. <laughs> well, but you do make a very, very, very valid point, man. I mean, especially in comparison to the Avengers. Um, that's why I think, I mean, they, they might be well off to play off first class, like that series of films. You could tear you could totally bring in Ian McKellen, or no, not Ian McKellen, he was the one that played the original Magneto, um, Michael Fassbender, because I think he did a phenomenal job. I mean, I, I can't think of a film that I've seen Fassbender in where I was like, hey, this dude's a shit actor, you know? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. I don't think they're going to cast anybody again. I don't think they're going to bring back anybody. Really? That's my own my own personal opinion. Just because I think like they'll be like, well, we're going to try to cut ties with this version of the X-Men. We want to make our own. We want to be like, here's our from the ground up creation. See, uh, see look, and know. I'll tell you, man, you you're uh we're going to we're going to get into your favorite shows that were based on a comic, right? You list Winter Soldier, it's phenomenal. Those are ever changing. It, Those are just ever changing. Uh, so. Okay, okay, but but the ones you listed at the time and then Endgame, phenomenal. WandaVision, yeah. phenomenal, and She-Hulk, phenomenal. But the two I want to really yeah. talk about with what you just That's said cool. specifically are WandaVision and She-Hulk, right? Because yeah. obviously they've broken reality to a certain degree. There's a lot of things going on with the multiverse. They're getting ready to set up Secret Wars. Have you read the newest Secret Wars for Marvel? Um, I mean, I read a bunch of them. I I know there's been a few of them. <laughs> I remember reading the original. Um, I'm trying to what? Who did that? Who did the the, the most recent one? Uh, yes, I read some of those because okay. I remember Alex the Alex Ross covers. Well, yeah, and it's and it's Jonathan Hickman who. Is yeah. a phenomenal That's writer. A, um, yeah, he's insane, but great. Yeah, I mean, yeah. he needs to be insane to write those stories. I, I think, just... yeah, I think a lot of writers are a little nuts and out there, man. I mean, yeah. he, Eric is bringing up sewer chickens, so we don't even get into that though, because she said I was doing. Well, she said, of them all. Yeah, she said <laughs> I was doing wonders for a reputation. I'm like, whatever. You're the one that brought it up. It's not like, it's not like I was like, let's talk about sewer chickens, Erica. But uh, I keep bringing it up in this interview. She's like, I'm gonna kick Factor's ass. Uh, 
Eh, whatever. Um, but I think that's honestly more what they're leading to with the secret wars that they're setting up is doing that. And I think in doing that, man, they could very much bring back every universe that's ever been done in Marvel film to a certain degree. You know what I mean? Like, hell. And, but I don't think like that will be, I don't think that's going to be like what they'll finally land on. You know what I mean? Like, I think oh. they're, they're going to have that, but then they're going to like streamline it and clean it up or try to. We'll see. I yeah, I think I think that's what uh, the intent of Secret Wars because it's obviously going to be a combination of the original Secret Wars and that one. Um, and I think I think a lot of what they're going to do is is make it to where they make everything canon for Marvel. You know, like all the X Men films are suddenly canon. Everything like everything that Fox ever did is suddenly canon in the MCU. But then they very much do thin it out. Uh, man, you really think they'll recast? That's a lot of fucking casting. James Jesus, yeah, dude. I do. I think they're going to. Well, I mean, you know, I think I don't think it makes sense to try and pull in so much history and make it feel like everybody has to know all of it um, when they're trying to make their own X-Men team, like in their own world. Um, but we'll see what they do. You know, I mean, Marvel hasn't been super uh interested i guess in like making everything super clean i think they're like they like just telling their stories and having a bendy wendy and going all over the place so i i'm vibey on that i like that um i like i mean i like the weirder shit i'm like go weird go real weird um you know uh werewolf by night was freaking i should have put that down because that was freaking awesome um, that that i so, I, I gotta I, say james that is probably one of my favorite things done by Mar. I was like, holy hell, they brought in Man Thing. They actually brought Man Thing into the MCU. That. Yeah. I mean, yeah, and that's the weirdest fucking thing they could. Pro I mean, that's the weirdest freaking thing ever I from Marvel. Probably, maybe. Who knows? Marvel's really weird. Mar I mean, Marvel has some weird stuff. Um, so, I mean, I don't know. They yeah. did a lot of weirdness in, uh, like, if you've seen Love and Thunder. Oh, yeah, that was real weird. I mean, yeah. yes, that was weird. Yeah. No, and I like all, I mean, I like that movie. I had some issues with that movie. <laughs> but um, well, I liked it. So mm, that was well, wait, Ragnarok was better, but yeah. Wait, I, I just got to know. What were your issues with that film, James? Um, I think everything was a little bit more like, but bump ching. But a bump ching. Like it felt very like, and we're making another joke. And and here's here's another joke. I'm like, we all know that Jane Foster is dying from cancer, right? Can we have a moment? Can we take two seconds? What's going on? Um, so I felt like some of it was a little too too much. And I like Taiki Waititi a lot. I think he's really great. Um, but I was just like, I think we're getting I think I think we figured out that Chris Hemsworth is really funny and also really pretty. He, but he's really funny. Um, so, so they were like really leaning into that. And I was like, but also like he's still an actor and things are happening that are sad. So it's fine. Like not everything has to be like, um, you know, it was a little, it was a little too jokey for me or something. I don't know why I felt I was like, I'm not uh, I'm uh, vibing. This okay. Time. So let me just ask you this, man. Cause you listed an ass load of DC films, right? What Marvel film? Bad Mar I mean, there's probably bad Marvel movies. Well, no, I want I want to know. Fans. We're not gonna say Marvel films though, because that that would encompass a num a numerous things. Because I mean, let's face it, the Fantastic Four have never been done right. Like he, I, I love how somebody played the Human Torch and Captain America, though. I still think that's kind of hilarious, right? I mean, but there there are so many different iterations of Marvel in film. You know what I mean? It's, Killmonger and Human Torch as well. Oh yeah, that's yeah. We've had some <laughs> Human Torch gets around that's, that guy. That's... Really, <laughs> apparently, man. Apparently, you know, he's even changed his race. Whatever. Uh, yeah. That's... I, we, we don't get into that Fantastic Four film because that was something where I was like, I feel like they they went half in and 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 didn't like you know like oh this is the adopted daughter no. No, don't be a bitch about it, right? Just make a, make her the daughter. Come on, don't don't be a bitch about it, right? But uh, I know, whatever. We're not going to get into the political and blah 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 and what they did. I, I don't give a shit. I don't care enough to get into all that. But it was just, in my opinion, the weakness 
of a company because they felt like if they would have done that with Marvel's first family and it had been an original couple, I think they would have felt like they would have ended up with backlash. Whatever. Yeah. Don't be some, I mean, yeah. That movie had a lot of issues because they also didn't go like full on with like the body horror stuff that they, I think the original director really wanted to do. And there's a lot of like, you know, feel like the, like the, uh, you know, the production company coming in and being like, no, we're going to do it this way. And we're going to have her come back in and we're going to film, refilm things and like film stuff that he didn't want to do. And he was supposed to be really difficult to work with, you know, the director. And I think there was a lot of just problems. There was obviously a lot of problems. And it was all show, like all visible on screen, which is what you want to avoid most of the time. Like, you know, you can have behind the scenes drama, which, you know, every film, comp like every production does. But um, or basically everyone does. Um, but you hide it once you get it filmed, and it wasn't hidden at all. It wasn't hidden at all. We could see all of it. <laughs> we, we're all like, nope. Uh, uh, and I mean, but again, I, I mean, I just think the FF's a hard group, I think, to do properly too, especially if you don't have the entirety of the Marvel universe to play with. You know, if you've yeah. just got that little section. I, I think, you know, and everybody's like, well, let's do Doom. I think it's a bad idea. But I digress from my point, man, and my question. My question, right, is within the MCU, what do you think was the worst film, James? Oh, um, the worst film. Just the MCU. So I know, I'm trying, to think, I'm trying to think. It's been a while since I've seen all of them. I mean, there's some really early ones that I was like, huh. Um, <laughs> um, probably, you know, like Iron Man, was it two or three? One of those was really bad. The, you know, uh, the second Thor movie was pretty bad. Dark World. Yeah, that was pretty bad. Um, Thor's hair in the first movie was really bad. Um, <laughs> I mean, the story, bro. I don't give a shit about their hair. I do. I'm like, that's a bad wig. What are we doing? Um, <laughs> why do you have millions of dollars and his hair looks like that? What's happened? Um, Fair point. That's a good, those are good questions. Um, uh, yeah, I think, I mean, those are probably the stumbles. The stumbles were early, I think. Um, they've had, I mean, I'm not a huge fan of the Ant-Man movies, but I don't think they're bad movies. I think I just don't particularly like them. <laughs> um, but I can kind of make that differentiation, you know? I can be like, oh, I see why people like this. I don't particularly, but sure. Um, so, yeah, I think, yeah, I think those are sort of my answer. I think those are probably pretty safe answers. I think a lot of people would probably agree with those are not like the best versions of- <laughs> I, I don't know, <laughs> you know if you look at if you look at Rotten Tomatoes, if you look at Rotten Tomatoes and their scores, I think the- uh... I think it's, um, and I'm not exactly sure what the order would be, but I'm pretty sure like the top three worst rated Marvel films respectively are Iron Man 3, um, Thor Love and Thunder, and Quantuminium. Well, yeah, I mean, I don't think, well, yeah, okay. I mean, Quantuminium, I don't think. <sighs> I Look, can I say to you? There's a lot going on in that movie. I think I, I enjoy <laughs> Quantuminium, but I yeah. but watching it, I'm like, yeah. If you really, really wanted to enjoy this, you need to at minimum see the Ant Man and the Wasp, Avengers, Infinity War, Endgame, and uh, uh, Loki. Maybe I mean, Loki, if you, yeah. yeah so if you really, lot. really wanted to enjoy that film for what it was, you really had to have already consumed. At least three, and really four, if you really, really, really wanted to get it all. You know what I yeah. mean? Which is which is a lot, and I understand yeah. that. But I mean, I honestly probably could have went and watched it without of consuming all that. But that's based on the fact I've read a I lot of comics. Michelle Pfeiffer. That's really what I went for. Michelle Pfeiffer, just being Michelle Pfeiffer. And I'm like, thank God they gave her something to do in this movie because I was really starting to lose it. I'm like, stop casting her to stand around and look great. I mean, she does. Fantastic. But, like, what are we doing? You had Paul Rudd play Michelle Pfeiffer more in one movie than she did herself. And I was like, what? what's happened? She's one of the first Avengers. Put some respect on Janet Van Dyne's name. She named them. She named the Avengers. I can't. 
it really bothers me. It's all <laughs> <in the bubble. laughs> I walk out of that movie being like, why do I not have more Janet Van Dyne? I don't understand. And why is she just another scientist in these movies? It drives me bonkers. She's such an interesting character in the comics. So interesting. I mean, so uh, that's definitely true, especially if you if they would have ever delved into the stories between her and Hank. But I don't think Marvel. But even without that, she's a fa- like she's a fashion mogul. She owns her own mm-hmm. business. She's was an event. She was a leader of the Avengers. She's smart. She's freaking capable of shit. She's really like a really cool character. Like, and she has great. She's a great. She has a great friendship with uh, She Hulk. And she's just like rad. She's just so I don't know. I think Janet Van Dyne is underestimated in terms of just like her own as a character. I think she's really cool. Uh, real quick, Janet, we're gonna go back to Janet that, but I gotta correct myself. The Eternals and Ant Man of the Wasp Quantuminium have a forty seven percent rating. Uh Thor Love and Thunder is sixty three. Dark World, which is one of the ones you mentioned, is at sixty six. And the Incredible Hulk is at sixty seven, which I don't feel is fair to the Incredible Hulk. I feel like uh the Incredible Hulk. Good. As far as I remember. That's the one with um, the best. Oh. Of Tyler. And- yeah, and, and Edward Norton, man. Uh, and, and according for the for the best, uh, Black Panther's got a 96% rating. Uh, Iron Man and Avengers Endgame tie with 94. Ragnarok and No Way Home tie at 93. Which... I mean, I, I really can't. I, yeah, those are those are all really, really solid films, um, yeah, just right. in their entirety. But I, I don't know. Like, I, I feel like sometimes, man, I'm like, I don't get why some of these are rated so badly. Like, I get the Eternals, in my opinion, had the same problem that um, the Justice League film did. You know, too many characters all at once. Lot, and a lot of people and a lot of characters and yeah. trying to figure out how they're all going to connect and who they are. And it's a lot, like in sort of my, you know, the concern with X-Men too, where you're like, well, you're going to have to introduce at least six of them or like, you know, like everybody's going to want to see somebody. Um, so I think that's a hurdle for them. And they've, you know, I think, well, the Eternals backstory is more <laughs> complex than um, the X-Men are. So that's good. They don't have to deal with that. But um you know, and more people know X Men already, so there's that knowledge yeah. that they're already coming in with. That's that's so. the thing about X Men. I think they won't have such a problem with is the fact that it's already been very much in the public sphere. From I mean, I mean, hell, in the '90s when the cartoon was around, you know what I mean? Like Wolverine is. Most people know Wolverine's name is Logan. You know. Yeah, I mean, there is a real sense of like the 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 common people <laughs> knowing nerdy crap that like only we did before <laughs> you know like they actually know what's happening it's weird uh, so. and but, but back to Janet Van Dyne real quick man I will say I, I would love to have seen them play that Hank Pym story in her with her how they had the very very not good relationship I think it would have been but I understand why Marvel didn't want to touch on it yeah. I do especially with the films that they're doing but um I'm curious to a point, man, what do you think about the fact that if you look at, you know, before the MCU started, if you wanted to make a comic book film, you went to Marvel or DC, right? As a as a large production company, you know, like they didn't, Fox, Universal, these companies weren't even reaching out particularly to like Image and definitely, you know, anybody below. That's just, that's just the truth. They went to Marvel and DC. But now that, you know, Disney has bought Marvel. Warner Brothers seen what they do, and they're like, oh, we're not selling any of our properties now. We're going to make a universe, right? What do you think about the fact of the effect that that's had on just different production companies reaching into comics at a different level? Which is why, dude, I do, I do, I really want to see a Deadliest Bouquet movie, TV series. I really, I mean, I, and I say that sincerely as someone who has read the comic, and I'm a fan, and I think it would translate really well. I even think it wouldn't even be something, it's it's not something that's going to cost you an ass load of money to make either. You know, you don't have to have somebody shooting lightning bolt out their asshole. You know? uh, no. <laughs> so, so, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's all practical effects. You could do pretty much everything in there practical, you know? Yeah. Um, so that's, that's why I say that. But what do you think about the fact that that's just what that's done? 
to where you know now you've got you've got the boys. There's there's Netflix's option and stuff all the time. You've, you've, Walking Dead was a huge success, which I highly doubt without the MCU. I don't know if that would have ever happened. You know? Yeah, yeah. I don't I don't know. Um, I mean, I feel like a lot of it's weird because like how long has the Walking Dead? I feel like Walking Dead has been on for seventy five years at this point. Um, <laughs> <so I'm> lost, <laughs> I feel like it's just been on forever. Uh -huh. Like when did it start? I can't. I, I want to say eight or nine years. Yeah, is it that short? I. Uh, <laughs> it really feels much longer. I really like that show, but I really I tapped out after like season six. I think I was like, okay, I think that's good. Did you read the whole comic? No, I didn't read the whole thing. Okay. So, yeah, I read the whole. Thing. Fan, I don't know. I don't know. I, I've read the entirety of The Walking Dead. Uh, shout out to Robert Kirkman, man. It's a dope book. Um, yeah. They, they really, like, I don't remember exactly when I tapped out on that show. But I really started going, oh, really? When they didn't just smoke Judith. Yeah. Like, I mean, when they made a lot of changes and choices. and I, I mean, I get that. But, yeah. but that baby needed to die when the baby was a baby. I'm sorry. Because... That's it. Just it. Just it. Just needed to happen, man. Is and and I'm and I'm not trying to be a stickler. I know. Look, if if I go see a comic book film or whatever, I don't expect it to be an exact adaptation of the comic. Just period. I don't. But at the same time, I feel like there's certain parts of the stories that if you change them, it's instrumental to the story. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I feel you. I, yeah. yeah. And I agree. I think like making some changes to just general story or development or characters just kind of then what's then that's not the character anymore then what are we doing like you're just now they just look like them it's sort of like what we're saying with x-men where you just had people popping up and you're like well they're not really the characters because we don't really get any sense of who they are or what their choices are or what they're doing so yeah it's just appearance for appearance sake and you're like well that's not what i'm here for so cool um but yeah i get it yeah, it's always disappointing when it's not, you know, what you want <laughs> to see. <laughs> yeah, like, well, um, at least, but we always have the comics. We always have the original stories. So that's nice. We can always go back to them and get what we want from them. Hopefully, we're it's, getting what we want from the it's, comics. <laughs> it's funny, though, man, because this is a conversation I've had with some of creators. I think it's odd that all of these films and everything haven't driven comic book sales at all. Why do you think that is? You know, like a Black Panther film drops. It's not like people are suddenly like, oh, I need to go read Black Panther comics, you know? Yeah. Well, it's interesting because it's just a, it's just a, such a different, um, hard to reach, um, you know, publishing area. It's just like, it's, we've really, I mean, at one point comics was like more available to people and then they started setting up these specialty shops comic book stores where they've kind of made the entry way to them more difficult. So like people want to read comics. People like those stories. They go and they read webtoons. They, you know, they read uh, graphic novels from Barnes and Noble and they read full collections and they, you know, they want to read this stuff, but it's the, um, we put up a lot of barriers in front of ourselves and their um, access to them because I think not a lot of people are like gonna go to their local comic book, sh comic book store they're gonna go to Barnes and Noble and pick up what they want so I think that's you know it's hard because we've set up a structure not us but like the industry has set up a structure in which like they have to go to a specialty stop sh shop to go and get those comic books well which is hard. well two points to make that one check out comic book university man that's where you can find Dave Right, who is my co-host over on comic books or this month in comic books. If you find Dave and you want to get into comics, just pick his brain, man, or look up Indie Rook on Twitter, right? And pick his brain on there. Um, you'll be able to pick his brain soon on the questionnaire Twitter once I get him the appropriate information. But hey, I got a lot going on. Leave me alone. Uh <laughs> right. You got it. And but but I mean and and because he'll he's easily he's he's just very helpful in leading someone to like you can tell him what you're into and he'll lead you into that kind of comic, you know what I mean? Um yeah. but 
as far as the specialty stores, man, do you think that became a necessity just based on how much of a bulk there was as far as comics? Because, look, I'd love to see, like, a spinner rack in, like, Kroger's and Walmart again as opposed to, you know, the, the three or four pack of comics that, that they sell. And it's like, oh, well, if I want to read the rest of the story, I got to, what, go on fucking line, you know? Yeah, exactly. No, I think that there's a challenge also. Yeah, we've, like, that was set up in the 70s and 80s with with trying to find distribution methods. And there's, like, a whole complicated story about why we have comic book shops and why we are all now have to deal with the monopoly that is basically Diamond, but people are trying to break that up a little bit, and why people are using distributors like Simon Schuster and Random House, and there's now other people kind of getting into the comic book sphere, which is probably a good thing, because you should never be totally, you know, strangle-held by one company yeah. that's never good. Um, so I think part and parcel of that, and also, like, it's really hard to figure out where to start reading a story. Like, I think um, comic books are very much a niche audience of like where you where do i start reading x-men which number one do i pick up where how why like who is this where you know there's 70 years of history it's freaking hard like that's so you know very challenging it's hilarious to me <laughs> and i sit here and laugh at you say that james because on the most recent episode of this month in comics and the past one for that matter it's something that me and dave discuss like Look, if you've never read a comic book in your life and you've only watched the Marvel Universe and you went and picked up this right here, yeah. you would be confused as hell. You would yeah. wonder why there are two Reed Richards, what's going on, who is Molecule Man, who is... There are so many parts of this story that would make you go, do the fuck what? Who? What is... Like, so, so you make a very valid point here. have gotten, which is what Stanley always said, was you never know what someone's first comic book is going to be. So there's a little bit of like people don't provide enough information sometimes, and they the and what could be someone's first comic book, and like that's you know it'd be weird for them to go into a store and be like, I want to pick up Secret Wars. There, that would be odd. Um, most people would be like, I want to pick up X Men or Batman or Superman. You know, like those are the books probably or Spider Man. Um, those are probably the ones that get a lot of like, and that's why I believe probably why they sell the most. <laughs> you say um, that, yeah. you say that James, but they're about to drop a secret wars movie. That's so, true. so perhaps it could come to the point where people are like, Oh, I want to read this comic. And I mean, if you grabbed the original secret wars from way back in the day, it would be way more comprehensible to somebody. You know what I mean? As opposed to uh, the newest one by Hickman. Again, the new one by Hickman is phenomenal. It's not in any way, shape, or form. It's it's a great it's a great book for so many different reasons. It's a great book. It's drawn phenomenally with Ross doing all the covers. The covers are, I mean, it's it's Alex Ross. That's that's if I didn't have to say anything else. Um, but that that's why we've gotten into this. Like as far as this is something me and Dave have started doing on this this month in comics is trying to introduce a couple comics like. These are these are good comics. Like if you just want to get into comic books, you know, yeah. like these five or six books are at a good starting point to where you can just jump in. You don't need a huge knowledge base as far as everything going on, you know. And and I think that's important. And I, I do I do think I think more than the idea of going into a specialty store because bro, people go into specialty stores all the damn time for. God knows what and this and that. And I think the one thing about comics, which is interesting, is like people, even with the movies coming out, people still ask the question, they still make comic books? So, like, that's, you know, that's the, that's what we're facing. That's the struggle of like, okay, well, we need to get this more in front of people then. Like, they don't even know that they exist. They don't even know that comic book stores are still around because they don't think comic books are still around. So, that's just like, that's a that's a big hurdle. That's like, oh yeah, they still make them. There's actually multiple publishing companies that publish comic books. They put out monthlies. They put out GNs. They put out graph. You know, they put out OGNs. They put out a whole bunch of different things. Multiple, um, multiple. How? What do you mean multiple, man? I don't even know how many fucking public company or publishing companies there are anymore. Like because, because frankly, and not even like because I mean, you you obviously have the big three: Marvel, DC, and Image. 
and and I if yeah if you huh yeah yeah the big three like and I and I say the big three specifically because everyone has consumed probably a bit of medium from those three. They may not be aware of Image Comics as far as oh that's in that's like but they know The Walking Dead and they know it's based on a comic book. They're just probably not aware of the fact that it's Image Comics. But you've consumed Image Comics like shit that was created by them in some capacity. Um, I mean, and then you go to Dynamite Boom, IDW, you know, some of the other larger ones that have really stuck around for a while. But then there are so many, I think, that you see pop up. And whether they have any kind of longevity is very questionable. You know what I mean? I, I I don't know how many comic book companies have, like comic book pub, uh, published companies have popped up in the past 10 years and don't exist anymore. But if it's 50, I wouldn't be surprised. Right. Yeah, but I mean, I think, yeah. I mean, that's, it's, it's publishing in general is really hard, which is why you feel, that's why like book publishers have like joined up with each other. You know, there's Penguin Random House instead of Random House and, penguin um there's just like that publishing is an ever shrinking market it's really hard um and that's just brass tacks of money and who's making it and how much you've got and who's gonna buy out whom and who's gonna own what and blah 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 like um that's just uh unfortunately part of like valiant comics was a big thing for a minute and then they've sort of have become less of a thing um you know so oh like, man that, you know, it's a good thing it's a good thing hardaway ain't here he got really mad at that valiant is his jam as far as comics like hardaway loves valiant i mean i i know valiant i've read a couple things but i mean i was always more image top cow chaos which doesn't even exist anymore because of some jackass accountant who didn't know how to pay taxes properly which yeah, yeah. That sounds right. well no that's literally that's why chaos that's went out of business is because their their accountant was like not paying their taxes properly, and their tax bill built up to the point where it was just like we have to declare bankruptcy. Yeah, so Brian, I'm sorry. I love you on the show. Uh, we ain't even got to get into that backstory because I know he's he's got a whole another thing going to where you know he's he's got his own thing going and is successful. But I I think it was sad to see that company go out of business because I was a big fan, uh, and it was especially just the fact that it was due to a fucking accountant not doing their job right right i mean so you also have to worry about that when you're in the comic book business it's not about just if your book well, you sells in any business well yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> um yeah accountants messing up is never a good thing uh, in any business it's like doesn't matter um but lauren who i work with at mad cave now was an editor over at um valiant so she was there for a while which is cool um I, I haven't read a lot of Valiant. I read um, some Faith and some. I picked up some random books, but they, I mean, they all really looked good and they were all really public. They were doing some great work for a while there. So, yeah, I mean, it's not, you know, it's never a mark against people or the quality that they're putting out. It's always just about, um, you know, who's seeing it, how much are you getting out there, how much profit are you making, all that stuff that's, you know, really hard to determine all the time. Yeah, and that's the sad thing. I think there's a lot of great books that go by the wayside just because, you know, promotion wasn't right or they just couldn't get it. Yeah, it's it's there's a number of things, man. I mean, that goes with inner entertainment medium, really, to where, like, I I've, I've been reading a uh, Deadly Class by Rick Remeter, and uh. then um, Dave made me aware that there was a show, and he's like, "Yeah, there's only one season," and I'm like, "Fuck you, Dave." You're, you're an ass. Why'd you even have to make me aware of this? He's like, well, you can still read the comics. I was like, I intend to, but you're like I am right now. <laughs> yeah. Like, like that's what I'm doing. But, but why, why you gotta make me aware of this show? That's just going to stop, man. Like, you know, and I think that happens a lot too. You know, as far as with comic books, you see comic books, get option. They run for one season. I mean, God, DC just canceled everything. Yeah. 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 Well, they, everything they want to do what Marvel is doing, which is tie everything together. Um, you know, and you know, I get what they're trying to do. We'll see. We'll see what they 
but hopefully it'll be like a slower burn this time instead of being like and now the justice league and you're like okay um <laughs> calm down um that was my <laughs> that was like what are we doing who um so yeah it was a lot right away um but yeah yeah no and then the re- like they were retconning things while they were doing it nah. they're like what do we haven't seen in years and we we're like watching her in the 80s i'm like that's not true she's right there we're she's right there yeah yeah and i mean they're about to retcon the hell out of everything with the flash movie that they've got coming up which can i just say as as a fan like that's one yeah look dude i don't want to talk about the actor i don't i don't i i i don't want to talk about the actor because there's part of me that wants like look i wanted to be able to go and enjoy a good flash film that dude made it really hard for me to even want to sit and watch that yeah, film. They made it hard. Yeah. They made it difficult it's, to like that movie. Yeah. It's just like, dude, like, like, can you be more like Tom Holland, please? Just yeah. please. Just be more like Tom Holland. You must have this, you, you accidentally spoil things in a movie by accident. Yeah, be yeah. Because that's so much, it's so much better if you just came out and be like, and you'd have been like before they ever announced it. Yeah, man, we got Michael Keaton as Batman. That would have been so much better than any of the crap that dude pulled. So much yeah. better. So much better. Because the crap that dude we ain't we ain't getting into all of it, man. But yo, I got one more question for you on the tip of editing, right, James? And I, I'm curious, man. Being a fan of comics as long as you have, which is obviously extensive, I could tell based on this conversation. Is there is there a character you'd like to have the chance to work on, or is there a writer? that you've read a good deal of their work, you're like, man, that'd be interesting to be their editor. Um, I mean, the, I, I grew up reading a lot of X-Men, so probably would love to work with Chris Claremont, I think would be challenging, though. <laughs> <laughs> I think his, cause his mentality is so um, of a specific time. It's very purple prose. It's very um, kind of overwrought at times, but I love him. I think he's so great. Um, uh, so that would be really fun. Um, a character I would like to is going to sound so cheesy. I mean, I would love to work on like an X Men comic or a Storm comic book, obviously. Um, but I would love, love, love to work on a Buffy comic book. I love Buffy. I grew up watching a lot of Buffy. Um, I know she doesn't originate from comics, but she's. I think the Boom Studio comics have been great. I really like their reinvention of her. I think. Um, you know, Willow, Xander, all those people, all those characters are really interesting to me. Um, yeah, I would love to work on that. That'd be so much fun. Um, I'm trying to think, you know, I mean, obviously anything basically Marvel, because I grew up, I was a big Marvel guy. I love all things Marvel, basically. Um, I read some really great Doctor Strange. It was really weird. It's all the weird shit that I love. So I'm just like, more of that, more weird stuff. So um, you up, wait. So- are you upset they've never done Ghost Rider justice in the films as well? <laughs> um, you know, I mean, Ghost Rider to me, I do, I'm not a big Ghost Rider reader, so that's interesting. Um, uh, but I do like that he's weird, so yes. I mean, I think Nicolas Cage is very weird, so I was sort of like, maybe? I don't know. Um, I, think, but... I think if he would have been given, like, I, I, I think Nick, Nicolas Cage, in my opinion, was a great actor to play that particular role as far as Johnny Cage. But I, I think it's that whole thing of at that point where they were making those films, they were kind of afraid to go full tilt into the comic, which which is not the case anymore. Anymore. It's like it's like, dude, do you see this dude literally dressed up in red and black spandex talking shit the whole time he's shooting people in the head? It doesn't matter anymore. We can go full blown comic book. No, I think they would be much more willing to go there now, but I don't think Nicolas Cage would be a, would be the right cast. That's a little, <laughs> little. I think he's a, and, and um, no, like I'm I'm waiting for like I'm waiting to, I'm waiting to see Renfield. I want to see his rendition of Dracula. That looks phenomenal. Not to yeah, totally totally not a comic book film. Um, though there are a lot of Dracula comic books up to and including Dracula being in Blade. But yeah, I think I think Nick Cage is a little little past the age mark for. Uh, Johnny Cage. I mean, I they like CGI'd on his abs in one shot or something, and I was like, "Well, <laughs> I love Nicolas Cage, but like, what are we doing? What are we? What are we pretending is there? What's going on?" Um, so you know, 
I mean, I know all of them have to have abs and they all have to like look amazing, but like whether who who do we think we're fooling? It's Nicolas Cage. Nicolas Cage. So, and not like Nicolas Cage, like the 90s. It was like you know, pretty early aughts. It was like all right, well, you know. At least, at least they dream. weren't airbrushed like 300. I would have loved that. I would love that in reality. Just like really quickly, just Photoshop on some abs for me. I'll be all set. <laughs> <laughs> Every start of summer, just like quickly, just get that all, all right. settled. Thank you. Well, look, look, apparently James wants abs airbrushed on his on his damn stomach. I ain't going to get in the whole the whole of that right look make sure y'all check out Chris Bell there are links in the description to all kinds of things up to and including that Kickstarter which is running right now I recommend it I've read that ash can it's it was it was good I'm very interested to see where the entirety of that story is going to be taken uh Erica everything I've ever read by her it it delivers and it's always got a, something in it you don't expect but it's like you know I kind of wanted that. It, like it's it's not necessarily what you wanted, but it's what the story needed, so you did want it. You know what I mean? That's that's the way to oh. put it with Erica. Yeah, I think the I think what they need, not what they want. Yeah, I think her and Doug share that in common, just very different ways. <laughs> <laughs> very that. Very good. Yeah, yeah, very different ways. You know, because Erica, it's like a. A twist where it's all emotional. Doug, it's all a twist where it's like, dude, what the fuck was that? <laughs> yeah. No, it's always it always goes back to the emotional core with Eric, which I always like a lot because I'm a very character driven reader. Like, I think Spider Man is great, but it's like nothing if it doesn't have Peter Parker or something. Wait, like you know, there there has to be that emotional core for the character that makes it. Are you saying you don't like Miles Morales? I love Miles Morales. Okay. Yeah, but again, Okay. Miles Morales, you know, Spider Man isn't nothing if unless Miles Damn Morales it. is your. Damn it! I have whatever, man. I'm still ending the fucking interview, but it would have been funnier if you said you didn't if you didn't like Miles Morales. Miles Morales. No, I love Miles Morales. Uh, I'm really looking forward to the next movie. I'm very excited. Yeah, I'm hoping. I'm hoping they do what I've kind of heard, which is they're gonna let, like, they're gonna cross Tom Holland's Spider Man into that in some capacity. I've heard yeah, rumors of that. I, don't know if it's true, but I'm very much looking forward to that and then bringing Spider-Man 99. And hey, man, I've, I've enjoyed this conversation and this quest with you, James. It has been a pleasure. Like I said, everybody make sure you check out everything within the links, right? Because there are links in the description to all kinds of things because I'm going to make James send me more because I don't want to link you to something that apparently is not something you've worked on because it's pinned at the top of his Twitter. <laughs> so he's sticking with me. So now I'm over here. I got... So I was like, okay, uh, we can talk about that. I mean, they're my friends, sure. Got um, fucking paper on my damn floor because you fucking... <laughs> yeah, you're wasting trees, bro, and we're trying to print comics, right? right? For real. But yeah. I will say, for everybody out there, if you've enjoyed this interview, what I want you to do, yeah, is I want you to send James a Shimura... Just with some really cool storm statues, because he apparently he apparently still has the action figure from way back in the day. Respect, bro. I'm not exactly yeah, I'm not exactly sure, but it's somewhere in this room. I got the old school '90s Deadpool figure too. Actually, two of them of two different variants. So, so yeah, right now, if you haven't enjoyed this, right? If you haven't enjoyed this interview, what I want you to do is I want you to send James some of them zombies from The Last of Us with just mushrooms growing all out over them. I don't think he'll enjoy that one bit, ladies and gentlemen. No. Yeah. Although the, the show was really good. So. Yeah, that show was phenomenal. But in the comic, check out your comic shit, right? Get your comic book on. Go to your local comic book shop. I guarantee you there is a clerk in that store that knows comics he will lead you to a comic you just sit there and have a conversation with him tell you tell him what you're into they'll lead you to something that you enjoy ladies and gentlemen because whatever you enjoy entertainment wise there's a comic book that'll fit it 
whether it's plush, the deadliest bank, the deadliest bouquet. I about fucked that up. I fucked that up so many times on Erica's interview. I don't know why. I just want a deadly banquet. No, dude. For some reason, I want a deadly. I want a deadly banquet. I don't know why. I I. I, I zombie sequel. Yeah, I can't. I can't. It's. It's. I think it's something that I might need to write. That's going to be on a whole nother tip. It might be more like something. It might be more like something Wagner would churn out than Erica by far, right? But yeah, the deadliest bouquet. To, I mean, hell, swingers to saga. To, I mean, there's there is something out there that you will enjoy in the comic book medium. I assure you. So do me a favor. Yeah, check out the links in the description. Get your comic book on, and have a great night, y'all. Thank you.